Welcome to chapter 10 of Hosea. We're going to continue here with God's lament uh, against his people in the northern kingdom. It begins in verse 1. Uh, Ampelos of Klimatusa Israel. O Karpos Aftis Evthinon. Katato plithos ton karpon aftis eplithine tathis yastiria. Katata agathatis gis aftu okodomese stilas. In this chapter, we're going to be going to the personal pronoun of the second person plural, which uh, begins with a epsilon. Emis, emon, emin, emas. Same as the uh, first person plural, except the first person plural has the eta beginning each uh, word, and the second person has the epsilon, which looks like the English u. We only have a few in there towards the end. When we get to them, we'll, they'll be highlighted. We'll go over them when we reach that place. Uh, so, uh, verse 1, Israel is a grape vine having good branches, uh, her fruit prospering. So this northern kingdom was doing well uh, economically. Uh, carpos, we have car carpos, we have uh, fruit, uh, carpophore, fruit bearing. Uh, according to the plethos, plethora, derivative of her fruits, carpone, plural, he multiplied uh, the altars. Uh, he, now Israel is in the feminine, her, so it wasn't Israel, but he doesn't say who the he was, but I think it's implying Jeroboam the second, probably. And uh, so Jeroboam the second uh, multiplied uh, the altars according to the good things of his geese land. Uh, the ge, geology is a derivative. He built stelos. Uh, monuments, a steel, S-T-E-L-E, -E is a monument made out of uh, stone of some sort that had uh, words of uh, praise for a person and a ruler, rich person, whoever. And uh, When I used to go to uh, Catalina Island, California, there was a monument there to uh, Wrigley, who had the Wrigley gum, owned the Chicago uh, Cubs baseball team and on the island of Catalina. He wasn't buried there, but this monument was to his uh, good deeds. Uh, now, what is it referring to? Uh, according to the good things of his land, he built monuments. And Second Kings 17.10, it says, uh, and they set up to themselves uh, I put stone, a monument, steal us, and sacred groves upon every high hill and underneath every tree of the woods. And they burned incense there in all the high places as the nations which the Lord moved far away from their face. So Israel was now doing the same thing led by the ruler. Verse 2, it continues, Amerisan, Cardias of tone, nin afanis thesonte, aftos kataskapsi ta thesiasteria of tone, tali porisusin e stile of tone. They portioned their hearts, uh, Israel and possibly is talking about here, uh, portioned their hearts. It wasn't towards God, it was towards these other gods. Now they shall be obliterated. The cardias is, uh, we have the cardiac, uh, cardiac arrest. Uh, he shall raise their altars. Now the he here, I don't believe, is the king, but it's the God. Their monuments shall languish, the stele. Uh, they're going to languish. They're going to be in places where nobody is going to see them and go into ruin, crumble, fall, whatever. In verse 3, the oti nin erusin uk esti vasilevsi min, oti uk efovithi son ton kirion, o they vasilevs ti pisi min. Because now they shall say, 
there is no king for us. The Vasilefs and Basilica, the derivative, for we feared not the Lord. Uh, ek fovi thesen, there's the verb, fovo, uh, phobia, fear. The phobe, you can see that in that, deriv in that uh, verb there. Uh, we feared not, ton kirion, but the king, Vasilefs. TPC, and there's 4160, a poet, being the derivative of the verb for doing. Uh, what shall he do to us? So, basically the people had no uh, respect for uh, God and the king, not for, uh, didn't have respect for God. So when you have lost respect for God and you've lost respect for the rulers of the nation, then what do you have left? You have a people that basically could care less and what's going to happen and uh, some people worry some people just live life a good life and could care less what's going on saying well what's going to happen nothing and you know doesn't bother me and verse 4 laulon rimata profasis sevdis viathisate viathikin anatali os agrostis krima epi Herson agru. Uh, speaking words, lying excuses, sev these, pseudo. Uh, he shall ordain a covenant. I think maybe it's talking about the king here. It goes back and forth with these uh, prepositions of he and uh, her and so forth. He can be a king, it could be God. And uh, this is one of the, uh, not a problem, but one of the. Uh, uh, features that Greek offers, uh, somehow the uh, writers of the Bible tend to go back and forth and it's hard to tell, especially in prophecy of what's, uh, what the subject is that the he is referring to. Anyway, he shall ordain a covenant, I believe, the king. Uh, judgment shall rise up as wild grass upon an uncultivated field. Well, a judgment, I believe, here was talking about is a, a bad judgment, a judgment against. Krima, we have crime uh, as a derivative. It's going to rise up as an on a uncultivated agru, agriculture, a field. We have uh, agriculture as a derivative. I live in Oregon here, and um, wild grass or weeds pop up and take over real fast if you don't keep them cut down. So this uh, image of this. Uh, uncultivated field with grass growing right away. Uh, judgment is going to take over this whole area. Verse 5. To mosko to iku on parikisusin ikati kunta samarian oti penthisan oleosav tu epafton ke kathos parapikranan afton Epi harunte epi tin voxenav tu, oti meto kisti ap av tu. There's a bunch of hymns and its in there. Uh, try to uh, sort this out. Uh, to the calf, the mosco in musk, uh, the musk ox, to the calf of the iku economy, house of on. On, this is what it's referring to here, is uh, Egypt. Uh, Samaria, the ones dwelling Samaria, so shall sojourn. So they were reaching over to uh, Egypt for their help. For his laos, of two, laos, laity, uh, for his people mourn for it. They wanted these uh, peoples to be their allies. And as they greatly embittered him, him here I believe is God, they shall rejoice over uh, his glory, or maybe greatly embittered him, could possibly be the if it could be the king, or could be uh, own. They shall rejoice over his glory. Could be own here. Doxen is glory, the doxology, uh, for he was displaced from him. That is the people. Uh, if you can sort out all these hymns and its. Uh, it's uh, wonderful. Let me know what they all are. I have sit there and studied it, and uh, it gets to be very confusing. Verse 6. Ke afton is asirius visantes apinenken 
and uh, having tied it far as Syria, they carried away. So we'll go into the next column here in a second. So um, they were also uh, coming to Assyria for uh, to be an ally. Xenia to Vasili Iarib in Vomati. They carried away tribute to Vasili, the king, Iarib, uh, by a gift. Uh, I believe it's talking about possibly here the king of Assyria. There's no mention of any King Jerob anywhere, in, and certainly not in Israel. Ephraim vexate Iskenin. Iskin thesate Israel in Tivuli of two. Uh, Ephraim the northern kingdom shall receive shame. Israel shall be ashamed in his council, deliberations, uh, the things that he was deliberating to do. They're going to be ashamed of these things later. Verse 7, Aperipse Samaria Vasilea Avtis os Friganon Epi Prosopon Ithatos. Samaria threw off her king. Vasilea, as a stick upon the face of the, wa of the water. Well, what is it talking about here? Uh, actually, uh, the king at the time, Jeroboam II, uh, after him came uh, Zechariah. Zechariah uh, lasted all of um, six months, and um, Shalom, the son of Jabesh, killed him in front of the people. And uh, it was the end of Yehu's family. And then after the six months reign came Shalom, who reigned for one month. And uh, he was killed uh, by Menahem, the son of Gadi in Samaria, who then became king. So there's these two quick uh, kings uh, that are killed off. 10.8. K XR Thesonte Vomi On Amartimata to Israel Akanthe K Trivoli Anavisonte Epita Thesiasteria Avton K Erusi Tis Orisi Kalipsate Imas K Tis Vunis Pesate Ep Imas And uh, the shrines, the Vomi. Uh, of own shall be uh, lifted away. A shrine, a monument was made out of, uh, generally made out of stone, or a shrine was something that was built more of like an altar type uh, thing. It was a fabrication uh, where people went to worship. Uh, and own, here again, I believe it's Egypt, uh, shall be lifted away. So apparently the people of Israel had shrines uh, for these different gods from the neighboring countries that uh, basically Solomon brought in originally. Uh, even the sins of Israel. Thorn bushes and thistles shall ascend upon their altars. So the, the uh, image here of the people are going to be taken away and their, uh, all these altars will be overgrown. I was in Ireland. I went by a, an old castle and it was all overgrown, walked through it, all the, half the stones had fallen off of the walls and overgrown with uh, ivy and uh, this is the, si the scene of this uh, area of what's going to happen to these people. They shall say to the mountains, Calypsate, uh, Apocalypsate is uncover, the apocalypse, the cop uh, calypse is the cover, uncover and cover. In this case, cover, because there's no apo. Cover us, and to the hills, uh, fall upon us. So the people are uh, going to be in woe. And verse 9, it continues. Af u ivuni imartin Israel. Eki estesen. Umi katalavi avtus in tovuno, poemos epi tatekna avikias avikias ilthe, from of which time the hill have existed, Israel sinned. So, uh, it, this kingdom of was people were always doing things that were against God. There they stood. No way should it overtake them. 
in the hill, what is the it? Uh, war, I believe. War came upon the children of iniquity. Uh, now that maybe it's not war there. And no way should it overtake them in the hill. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I was thinking it was the war, but now I look at it and it doesn't seem that that's what it's talking about uh, because it did overtake them. Uh, maybe they were thinking that nothing would uh, overtake them. Uh, maybe this is a quote, no way should it overtake them in the hill, but it did. War it over, did overtake them. It's probably what it's talking about here. In verse 10, to pythevse aftus. Ke sinak theson te lei ep aftus in to pythevus the aftus in te sin avikias afton. To correct them. And, as me, the war. And peoples shall be brought together against them in their being corrected for their two iniquities. It doesn't say here what the iniquities are, uh, particularly that I see. But uh, the peoples, uh, the Assyrians, and the, uh, mainly are going to be coming against them. And uh, they will be corrected for their iniquities, two iniquities. More than one uh, could possibly be what it is. It's a figure of speech that means that you have uh, many problems or many, many things I have against you. 1011, Ephraim, Vamalis, the the Vagmani Agapan Nikos Ego the Epilevsome Epi Tokalistone to Trachilu Aftis Epi Vivo Ephraim Parasio Pisome Yudin Eniskisi Afto Yaakov Ephraim, the northern kingdom, a heifer being taught, loving altercation. This almost sounds like uh, the early uh, prophecies that Jacob gave against the twelve sons uh, before he died. Uh, same type of uh, uh, wording. Ephraim, a heifer being taught, loving altercation. But I shall come upon the best of her neck. I will conduct Ephraim. That is, God is going to determine what's going to happen. And I will pass silently over Judah. Jacob shall grow in strength against him. So eventually uh, Jacob will uh, overcome, but not yet. They still were uh, fighting with the, uh, the uh, Judah, Israel and Judah were still fighting, and, and Judah lost some of these battles. Verse 12. Spirate iaftis is dikiasini. Trigisate is carpon zoes, fotisate iaftis fos, genosios, exitisate tonkirion eos tu elthin genimata dikiasinis imin. So to yourself for righteousness, dikiasini. Uh, Gather the vintage for uh, the fruit of life, carpon, carpophore, zoe, a zoo, uh, life, and uh, loving animals. Photisate, the pho, photi, a phot, photo, photon, has to do with light. A light for yourself, uh, the light, I put the the, phos, phosphorus, uh, is a derivative. The light of knowledge, gnosios, gnostics, or the knowers. So uh, now God gives, or Hosea gives, uh, good advice for people. Inquire of uh, inquire of Ton Kirion until uh, the offspring of righteousness comes to you. Uh, now, it could be uh, offspring of righteousness uh, is a uh, condition, or it could be a person here. Uh, until the offspring of righteousness comes to you. Uh, if you would open the Second Corinthians 9.10, we'll see a where this is used in one other place, these two words. And it says, And the one supplying seed to the one sowing, even may he supply bread for food, and multiply your sowing, and may he increase the offspring of your 
righteousness. And so here Paul is talking about uh, this offering of uh, increase your offspring of your righteousness uh, in every way being enriched in all simplicity, which manufactures through us thankfulness to God. It's not necessarily a riches, but uh, a righteousness that's uh, an offspring, it's, uh, which you produce, and uh, this will come to you when you follow God. 10.13 Inati parasiopisate asevian ketas adikias avtis etrigisate efagate karpom sevdi oti ilpisas entis armasi su in plithi dinameos su. Why did you pass over impiety? In silence, the people of Israel, I believe he's talking to. Uh, why did you see things bad, but yet your silence uh, showed where your heart was? You ignored it and allowed impiety to reign, more or less, and gather the vintage of her iniquity. So then you're, you gathered it. Uh, you not only overlooked it, but you gathered it in as a harvest. Uh, you ate false fruit, psevdi. Pseudo and carpone. For you hoped in your armacy, uh, armaments, uh, armacy, derivative is armaments, your chariots. In uh, plethi, plethora, abundance of your dynamios, dynamite power. Uh, you hoped in your chariots. Uh, your, we hoped in our strength, more or less, uh, when our strength. We see us ourselves as invulnerable because of our uh, material wealth or the position that we have with the people around us, a position of power. Then we think we're indestructible. And we uh, start to rely upon that instead of uh, giving glory to God, which uh, King David saw. Uh, he gave, did give the glory to God for the strength that he had, but not these people. Verse 14, K exanastisate apolia en to leosu, K pantata peritetikismena su, ikisate osarcon salmana ek tu iku iravoam in imeris polemu, mitera epitechnus idafisan. And destruction shall rise up among uh, your leo, people, laity. And panta, pandemic, all your places being walled, walled around shall be undone. As the ruler, Shalman or Salmana in the Greek, uh, Archon, a ruler, uh, departed from out of the house of Jeroboam, Iku, economy, in Imeres Polemu, in the uh, days of battle. Uh, they dashed the Mitera, mother, Mitir, upon children. Possibly we can be talking about what's happening here in Second Kings uh, 15, 15, 10 to 16. I'll read it, and uh, it's uh, this uh, king now, uh, Shalem, and was, might be talking about Sal Salmana here and before uh, he was king. Uh, it says, And Shalom, son of Jabesh, confederated against him, and he struck him, uh, that is, uh, against uh, uh, Zechariah, uh, struck him in Keblam, and killed him, and reigned instead of him. And the rest of the words of Zechariah, behold, these are written upon the scroll, the words of the days of the kings of Israel. This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Yehu, saying, Your sons shall sit unto the fourth generation upon the throne of Israel. And it became so, and Shalom, son of Jabesh, reigned in the th uh, 30th and 9th year of Azariah, king of Judah. And he reigned a month of days in Samaria. Uh, and Mahan Menahem, son of Gadi, from Tizra, ascended and came into Samaria. And he struck Shalom, son of Jabesh, in Samaria, and he killed him. And he reigned instead of him. And the rest of the words of Shalom and of his confederacy, which he confederated, Behold, these are written upon the scroll of the words of the days of the kings of Israel. Then Menahem struck Tipsa and all the ones in it, and its borders from Tizra, for it did not open up to him. And he struck it, 
and the ones having one in the womb he tore asunder. So this could possibly be what it's referring to right here, even prophesying it. And it ends in 15, utos pi so imin uikos to Israel, apoprosapu kakion uh, imon. So I will do to you, here we have the plural, although it's talking about the house of Israel, um, I'll do to you and the, the people possibly, uh, O house of Israel, from in front of your evils, the evils of yours, uh, imon in the plural and the genitive. And so, uh, this pretty well is uh, going to finish most of the uh, uh, lament of, again, of God against Israel. In the next chapter, we're going to go into a more positive note uh, of uh, God's talking about the future Israel, which we know now is a, a kingdom again. No, I'm sorry, a kingdom. It's a country again, and uh, many things in the world are... Uh, being determined because of this little postage stamp size nation. Hope you'll enjoy. Join us in chapter 11, and God bless.